Welcome to the Virtual Manager podcast. My name's Anna Russell. I'm an artist manager and founder of The Virtual Manager. Throughout my career, I've developed and managed several music artists from new unsigned acts right through to globally successful ones. This podcast is for all unmanaged or independent music artists who want to start, build or grow a successful, sustainable music career. When it comes to progressing in your music career, the last thing you want to slow you down is lack of funds. Yet this, of course, is one of the biggest and most common barriers you'll face as an independent music artist. So in this episode, I want to share with you one very simple step that you can take today to make your music project more financially viable. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about the larger funding you may need here. For example, the recording of an album. Although I will also be addressing the various types of funding that are open to you for larger expenses in future. In today's episode, I'm talking more about the smaller ongoing expenses you have as a music artist and any potential one-off opportunities which may come up that can incur costs. Things such as equipment and instrument costs, even something as simple as guitar strings, perhaps it's new software or apps you may need to use, rehearsal space or a social media advert. Essentially, we're talking about the things that help you to function fully and as stress-free as possible as a music artist, songwriter or producer on a day-to-day basis. But more than that, I want you to be in a position to be able to take any of the unexpected opportunities that come up for you and could further your career or help you to build your fan base. For example, traveling to a press or radio interview, needing to rent a recording studio for a few hours to record for a paid job, being given a last minute festival gig that you need to travel to, or playing a support slot for an established artist in your hometown. If you're doing everything you can to develop as a music artist, inevitably opportunities such as this that you might not always be able to foresee will come up. These are what you've been working towards and in order to grow further, you're going to want to be able to take them. Here's how you can reduce the possibility of missing these opportunities ensure you're able to afford your necessary expenses and ultimately make your music project more financially viable. Each month, save an amount of money towards your music artist project, which can be used as and when you need it and you will need it. So I said it was super simple, but I speak to lots of music artists who are not taking this step to make their music more financially possible. Don't wait till the problem of money comes up to solve it. Get and stay ahead of the problem now. The key is that you can't just put money aside once in a blue moon or as and when you remember to do it or think you can afford to do it. Remember that as a music artist, you're running a business and all businesses will have overhead costs, whether those are weekly, monthly or quarterly. Plus, there will always be unexpected costs, just like the opportunities I mentioned earlier. That means you want to get into the habit of transferring whatever you can afford from your salary or income to your music project every 30 days, so once a month. This allows you to build up a reserve of funds for whenever they're needed. Even if you don't think you will need it for some time, let's say you don't have any regular expenses at the moment, it's good to know that there are savings building so that you don't hit any delays that will stop you moving forward because you don't have the funds readily available. The easiest way to do this is to set up either a separate account for your music project or a sub account within an existing bank account you have. So if you already have a business banking account for your music artist project, do it in there. Whichever of these you choose, you want to ensure that the monthly savings are separate from your personal banking or day-to-day accounts. That way you're not tempted to use them when temptation strikes. You can give this music savings account a name, which could be expenses or operating costs. Then transfer money manually on the same date each month, or better yet, set up a direct debit to do it automatically for you. That means you don't even need to think about it. Now, a bank I love for this, because it's great for setting up sub accounts within it, is Starling. Starling is currently an app only account. It's completely free to use, and you can set up your account in minutes. And no, this isn't an advert for them. It's just that I use them for my own business and personal banking, as I find the feature of this app so useful. So how much should you be putting towards your music each month? The answer is as much as you can afford, and that's going to be different for every single music artist. 
Ideally, you want it to be enough that you know for sure it will cover all your regular expenses, as well as any potential opportunities that come up. However, if that's a stretch for you right now, start small and build up from there. So perhaps you start by saving 1% to 5% of your income each month. Then reassess that amount every three months to see if you can raise it. If you're a music act that has more than one member, you want to each be contributing the same amount to the music account each month. Now, if you're listening to this and despairing because you really feel you can't afford it at all at the moment, start really small. If that means putting away £1 in month one, £2 in month two, £3 in month three, and so on and so forth, that's absolutely fine. What you're doing is creating the habit and then building the discipline of saving money for your own music career, whilst increasing the amount gradually. It'll build up over time and be there for you when you need it to move forward. Knowing that you're doing what you can to make your music project more financially viable is a far more positive and empowered position to be in than not doing it and can make you feel more in control of your own music career. It can also give you a new appreciation for your day job when you know that it is helping to fund your music career each month. Take this very simple step today and you'll thank yourself down the line, I promise. That's it for this very first week of the Virtual Manager podcast. I'll be back on Tuesday of next week with a brand new episode and every Tuesday thereafter. I'll see you then. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Virtual Manager podcast. If you found it useful, I invite you to check out the Virtual Manager membership site. The Virtual Manager is an essential resource for independent music artists who want to start build or grow a successful sustainable music career. It ensures that you have the foundations of that music career in place, then helps you to build on those to achieve your music career goals. With monthly music industry training, a library of tools and resources, A&R feedback on your music, access to live Q&As with me, plus an active supportive community of like-minded artists, the virtual manager is the perfect place to be for any unmanaged or independent artist. The Virtual Manager relaunches very shortly, so to get early bird access at the lowest membership price, join the waiting list now at thevirtualmanager.co.uk. Finally, please take a minute to review and subscribe to this podcast. It helps more independent music artists to find us.